Hello, welcome to Rough Cut Film Review. I've been working quite hard there and practicing sounding, you know, chipper. Um, so, this is a review of the William Freakin film Killer Joe. This was in cinemas ages ago. I was really looking forward to it, uh, but for whatever reason, I simply didn't get to the cinema during its run. And I've only just gotten around to watching it now on Blu ray. You know, as I've got to do all this film review y malarkey, well, I don't have to, I do it for my own enjoyment, but as I've got to do it around, you know, other life stuff and I don't get paid to do it. Once you miss a film, it's that it can then be quite difficult to actually pick it back up again because, you know, there's all this new stuff coming out that I'm trying to stay on top of and doing a poor job of that. Anyway, so blathering over killer joe as i said it's from william freakin the man that brought the world the french connection and uh, the exorcist which is you know when you see um, best film ever made sort of lists it's always right up there and quite rightly so even today it's still got the power to shock and scare people it's you know completely undiminished today despite the fact that we've had something like 40 years of horror shockers that have, have been trying to scare you and we've had all that torture porn stuff and all different genres of horror films. If you still watch this, it's still very scary and, and, and absolutely shocking. It, I mean, it's one of those few films that some people say it's, it's pretty much as near to the perfect film as you're ever likely to get. Since then, Freakin's career hasn't had that level of success, really, since the 1970s. And we've got to remember that was a very, very long time ago that he made that in an industry as fickle and money orientated as Hollywood. So, you know, Killer Joe, him making Killer Joe really proves that not only is he still out there working at, you know, what is now a very ripe old age, but he is trying new things. And I think that's absolutely commendable. So this film stars Matthew McConaughey, and I'm having a very difficult time pronouncing McConaughey, so hopefully um, I'll remain consistent. He was always, you know, when he was interviewed, he always seemed like the nicest guy in the world, but... In terms of cinema, he was sort of a harbinger of doom because if he was in a film, inevitably he was leaning, leaning on the poster, and the film would be a you know a generic chick flick or a romantic comedy or God knows what. Very recently, he's proved he is actually a very fine actor. He was also in Magi uh, a film called Magic Mike, which came out last year, and um, it, I, you know I thought it was a really good film. If you don't feel slightly uncomfortable with sort of oil men gyrating their hips. Uh, consistently through the film. I'd very much recommend that. It's, it, it is a good film. So McConaughey here uh, is supported you know, in Killer Joe by a very small cast, but they are very good. So it's people like Thomas Hayden Church, um, who is in Sideways. There's Gina Gershon as well as his wife, um, you know, who is, is tremendous fun, although I'm not entirely sure fun is the right word, but in a sense she is. So plot-wise, Killer Joe, it's, it's very simple. We're introduced to this sort of poor underclass of America. You know, people drink a lot of beer. It's grim. Uh, you know, people are sort of desperate and staring up at the glass ceiling and just sort of going about their their everyday life. A young man played by Emil Hirsch um, is in debt and in trouble, essentially. So, he, you know, he owes some bad people some money. He proposes to his father, played by Church, that they have his mother and church's ex-wife uh, respectively killed at, so that they can claim on her life insurance policy and then they obviously split up that money between them she's a horrible person anyway she treated them all terribly oh my word um, the father isn't the brightest so he sort of goes along with it and they then you know introduce a couple of other family members to this right we're going to do away with the you know mother slash ex-wife character who, crucially, we don't really see. So, they bring in Joe. He's a hired killer, and as we can tell, sort of sometime policeman in his day job. You know, he's a very sort of, you know, very much of a shark of a character. Um, so, they don't actually, he's got certain rules on which he'll take the job, you know, a job, a contract killing, ro you know, job. I didn't say roll then, but that doesn't sound quite right. They don't have the money up front, so as a retainer, Joe takes the daughter of the family, who is very young and very much the heart of the film, uh, played by Juno Temple, um, a character called Dottie. So, Joe has her. Things don't work out the way <laughs> that were planned. Things go wrong. Now, it's a very dark, obviously it's a dark film. It's very much sort of stripped-down filmmaking, 
And um, I mean, it could be a play, really. It's so simple and straightforward. And I mean that very much in a complimentary way. I love this sort of filmmaking. Um, there's a scene at the end, which is, I don't think this is a spoiler to say, there's a film, at the, a scene at the end, rather, of the film, which has been, you know, discussed at length by other people uh, involving a, a, a fried chicken drumstick, people saying that was too shocking. But actually, I think in the context of the scene and the sort of the searing tension that, that Freakin manages to get on, on the camera, I thought that it was absolutely appropriate and, and gave us a better understanding of, or left us in no doubt, shall we say, of people's intentions and their mentality and uh, all the rest of it. The ending is is also fairly ambiguous, and I think, in a lot of ways, I think people will read into the ending. You know, you can read into it any number of things, and I think people will go out of that thinking the film ended in different ways. And I think again, that's a very good thing. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, it's not quite up there with Fargo, uh, which I hold up to be, you know, one of the real great black crime capers. Um, but it's not far behind. Um, I think this film is really good indeed, and bless William Freakin for, for still doing this and still sort of battling on, because this is really good and it's really fresh for me. I enjoyed this a lot. Uh, kind regards, Christopher Thomas.